Yeah. The YouTube is, uh, yeah, yeah, we have. The, you mean the four clips, is it? Yeah, we have, we do have it with the... Yeah, uh, sure, we, we, we yeah. have a photo of that and we will send uh, the links to you. Yeah, can. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah, you can, you want to, you want to continue with the... Um, the this is the clip that I show on cyber uh, bullying, the one that will question the theory. Okay, so this is the first part of it. is a Premier 6 student who is well liked by her friends. She is smart and does well in her studies. Her best friend is Melissa. They have always been close even though they are in different classes. Angel is in the best class while Melissa is in the last class. Their friendship goes a long way. In fact, they have been best friends since Premier 2. Angel is an only child, but despite that, she is very sensible. She loves her parents very much and is very close to them. She wants them to be proud of her. Angel has a blog. She uses it to share her thoughts with her friends. She also likes to chat with Melissa on Facebook. Yeah, they cannot have access to Facebook. There's another thing that we talk about. You know, at a certain age, you cannot have Facebook. Then the students will ask, they can use different names to go in. So there's another topic that we can talk about, yeah. So until here, I just, just pause for a while and then they just uh, have some comments. I just show you some of the comments that, uh, like for example, you can see like Angel stage four of human development according to Erickson theory. This are actually the theories they learned in session two. So actually, this is actually played in session four. So they kind of tie in all the different theories. Yeah. So this is the thing. Yeah. Okay. You can show the video where there is the conflict between the two girls. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think that's where the interesting bit. Okay, uh, this is the part here. I think it's the second, right? Is it here? Unlike Angel, Melissa does not get along well with her parents. She thinks that her parents dote on her younger brother more than her. She gets reprimanded by her mother over trivial matters every day. Melissa's father also often takes it out on her as he's upset with her for not doing well in her studies. He always compares her to Angel and is ashamed that his daughter is in the last class. Although Melissa is close to Angel, she cannot help but resent Angel at times. Why does she have everything? Why is she better than me in so many ways?
nasty thought crosses her mind. That very night, Angel checks her Facebook after she has finished her homework. She cannot believe what she sees. Her account is hacked and has been vandalized. Who would do this to her? Angel feels helpless. She keeps asking herself, who would do this to me? She calls out to Melissa. She thinks Melissa may be able to help her, but Melissa ignores her. Okay, uh, I just want to share a few things after the second clip. There's something that came to my mind. Some of you might wonder, is how come it's only one gender, that we're only targeting the girls? Actually, in the second video clip, we deal with the boys. It was actually quite a, a, a plum boy trying to run for a race. It was a true story. Okay, the second thing that actually happened here is that some of the uh, student teachers who are the, the male, the male student teachers, were appalled that the girls are capable of doing such a thing. Then the female student teachers of my class said, it happened in their school. This is something that happened. And the boys was like, ah, oh, are you sure that kind of thing? And the third thing is that it actually caused some of the student teachers to share their own personal experience of being a victim of cyberbullying to the class. So actually, it kind of bring up a quite a number of things here. So it was the second video clip here. We tried to show, uh, show the contrast between the different parenting and family and how this girl, even though she might have everything you know, in the world, yet she's still a victim. And the last thing is that we also want to caution the student teachers in saying that sometimes good students may not want to say that they're being bullied because they want to maintain that kind of image. So as teachers, we must also be aware that certain things like that happen. So there are a few lessons to be learned other than the theories linkage. Okay, so I'll pass the floor now to... Um, can, I, can I just ask a yeah. technical question? Yeah. Sure. When you added the music yes. to the video clip, are, yes. those, are those original... Oh, okay, I have a composer. I also have this uh, CL purchase. So yeah, the copyright. You, can, you have to worry about copyright. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, in that's a certain. Case, we have a huge music library. Yeah. To, yes. Yeah. So yeah. That's not okay. I think one, one observation, uh, I think, I mean, CL is very glad to work with Justina on this. Uh, not because this is just, not because this is simply because it's on YouTube. The power, I think, doesn't lie in the fact that it is in YouTube. 
We are not relying on the fact that, oh, okay, the student teacher of today likes to watch YouTube videos, therefore we put the video on YouTube. We are not, we are not playing that game. You play that game, you lose. I think the power of uh, the example, the, 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 the script, the quality of the video, yeah, uh, is that it provides a common context uh, upon which your, your learners can, uh, first of all, they can identify with it. Right. Second of all, if they don't, they can actually all use that as, a, as, as the context for discussing these theories. Otherwise, the theories are so abstract. This makes the situation concrete, you know, and, and uh, therefore the learning, uh, the task, you know, it isn't so amorphous, isn't so out there. It is here. This is the problem, the situation that we have. Let's dissect it, let's deconstruct it, and then reconstruct it. I think that is actually the power of the design of the learning activity. Right. Actually, to write on it, right, in fact, during the interview, we asked the student whether they would prefer another context, you know, American context. Mm -hmm. And some of them cited that uh, other courses actually use other contexts, American context. Mm -hmm. And they were totally lost because they say that we don't have such a kit in our system. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we actually bridge that? Of course, they do say that it'd be good if we have a local and an overseas context. But if, if there's no time, then they will prefer the local context so that they can anchor something on it. Yeah. And, and for the staff who is here, and of course Justina is also here, what we are pushing in terms of YouTube videos is that this is, I think, this is actually just the first step. You know, what we also uh, want to work with Justina and, and the rest of you with is to create more interactive videos. So in this case, the video starts and ends after about seven to nine minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't give the user a lot of choice. You know, we can actually create in YouTube a uh, scenario-based kind of learning. So the, the ending is open-ended. I mean, uh, you give them a couple of choices like MCQ, you know, what would you do if you were angel now, then give them A, B, C, they will click on it and then you will, will play out the scenario. So the user can actually role play angel, you know, or any of the characters in the videos and then, and then bring that to a certain end and then you get them to, uh, that, that not only gives them a common context but gives user choice, which is a very powerful thing. And then you can you know, discuss theories and, and practice also. Yeah. Uh, and that's the, the, the next phase of, of what we're trying to do with uh, YouTube videos. We already did it with another outside course, right? What's that? The same one. <laughs> it's actually mine. I, I want just to tell. <laughs> yeah, actually, for my, my this August thing, uh, I, what I did was a few things. Besides the videos, I also use clickers yeah. and I also use this uh, decision tree for one of the session called moral development. Yeah. I think Nico can actually. Yeah, we call those videos decision tree yeah. because you have to make up your mind, you have to make a decision at the end of the video as to what you will do next or what you want the character to do. I think before Nico touch on it, right, uh, later what she's going to show it to you is I work with Karen very closely, uh, the scenarios, what to do, and the designer, you know, and things like that, and we were actually going through the different options. I think maybe la later, Carolyn, you can also share your thinking, you know, about this, yeah. Thank you, Justina. I thought maybe uh, before we let Nico take over, I'll just give a token of appreciation oh. to her. Oh, thank for, you. Uh, <laughs> very her experience. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>